Hi, boys and girls. Ken Smith. I'm here with Phil's Hello. hiding over there. We're having so we just discovered we're two weeks difference in age, and yes, I am the older of the two. I know y'all find that stunning, don't you? <laughs> so we were gonna do. I'm, we're leaning on Phil's Bass Cat Links, which is the boat. I know I've got a lot of guys ask me to look at a lot of different bass cats. But as you guys know, I'm really a wide body boat guy. I'm coming out of a Ranger. I say I'm coming out. If I come out of a boat, I'm coming out of a Ranger. And I, I gotta tell you, I, I'm pretty convinced at this point after looking at all these boats, I'm changing boats. But I'm coming out of a 521C, and it's a big boat. And I, I put this off doing another Bass Cat because Bass Cat was really my guinea pig with that Puma model, the first boat we looked at. And, uh, I, I just kept looking at different guys' boats on the water and in parking lots, and I saw this boat in a parking lot of a tournament the other day, and I actually had my trusty tape measure with me, and I measured this boat, and I was real surprised, and I'll share with y'all what I discovered. But I wanted to do Bass Cat as one of my last boats because I know so much more about what I'm looking at now than I did originally. So we're going to go through this boat. Phil and I have known each other for a really long time. Uh, we, we've not spent a lot of time together, but we've known each other for a long time. But I know he's going to tell me, matter of fact, he's already told me one thing he would change on the boat if he could change it. So we're going to get the unvarnished truth about the boat. There's some things I really like about the boat. There's a couple things I can see I would like to see changed about the boat. But this is the style of boat. Big, wide, stable boat that I'm interested in running. We were going to do it to day but it's been doing that all day we were going to do it yesterday and it rained yesterday so we're hopefully going to get out and ride in the boat tomorrow but we've got a nice warm well-lit spot or at least dry if not warm where i can go through the boat and look at a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and get some get some feedback from phil on the boat he's been in a number of boats so why don't we do that let me hop up in the boat and let's talk to him a little bit about it Guys, a quick cutaway, and I mentioned this before, since Bass Cat was my first video, my, my guinea pig, I, they're one of my last, and this one's a little different because I'm going to talk to Phil quite a bit, and I'm going to talk to Phil quite a bit because I've known him a long time, and he's been in a Bass Cat for over 20 years, so uh, I know he'll tell me the truth, so I'm going to pick his brain some, and uh, find out why he's in bass cat why he's in this boat and just kind of his overall experience with these boats so here we go guys so this is going to be a little bit choppy because uh we filmed some of this yesterday in phil's garage we fished some filmed some of this today on the water but so a lot of the stuff phil and i talked about yesterday we kind of realized later was off camera and some of that was how long you've been with bass cat how you wound up at bass cat but for me why you're still at bass cat and then you've been in a bunch of different model boats. Why you're in this model boat? So when did you join Bass Cat? When did, so, when did you buy your first Bass Cat? My first Bass Cat came in 2002, which was a 2003 model. And I had previously been in in uh, Tritons. Okay. And I was in that mode of, heck, I was, I guess, 30 something mm -hmm. at the time. Maybe, maybe a little younger than that and uh fishing fishing was a big deal to me it was uh it was my hobby it was it was a passion that i wanted to progress as, as high as i could get and having a boat and a dealer behind me was a big deal to me so what i ended up doing i went fishing with a an elite pro james niggemeyer who at the time had a pantera 3 with a 200 and I thought that well, was that's a, a little bitty boat too now. I thought and... that was the greatest riding boat I had ever been in. Uh -huh. So that's that's how I made the swap, or when I made the swap, and a little story behind that. Now, in those uh, 17 years, I guess, 18 years, I've had about 18 or 19 bass cats, and just about had them all, except for some of the smaller stuff. And then here recently, most most of the models that I owned was a Puma FTD. It, it was it was kind of a neat boat because it had a net storage in it, and you didn't have to 
step over the net and some of that stuff. But that and the Cougar FTD were were top line boats for a, for a long time. And then and those are both twenty feet and change. Those those two boats are twenty foot four inches okay. long. So just barely over twenty. And then I heard uh, you you kind of want to swap around. So then I went to an era last year. Which the era is basically the Ferrari of the bass catch, that's right? That's correct. And uh, it will it will run, but it will also fish well and and ride in rough water. Pretty dead gum good for the size of it. Yeah, and actually, you you talked about this, um, and we did it a minute ago, and I'm gonna show that footage. Actually, I probably already showed it in this video, but where you're actually running the troughs, right. and you said in that era, in it's that so era, responsive, it's yes, really it's really, really easy. It's really really easy in the era because it is so responsive. And you get that responsiveness, guys, based on it's a little shorter, but it's a lot more narrow. So yes. you've got it's just gonna corner better. Yes. I mean, that's just part of the dynamics of how a boat works. And then. Uh, this year, I decided to get a Lynx. Top of the line boat, other than the Jaguar, and the Jag Jaguar is just too big for my liking, but the, it, the Jaguar will have its purpose for sure. Oh yeah. And like today, the Jaguar would be a awesome boat to have. Mm. And uh, part of the reason why I chose the Lynx is I'm now 58 years old and over the last year or two i think i've kind of lost a little bit of balance and agility and this big wide deck just helps some of that thing to help some of that out to keep you from going in the water well and you team fish more now than individual fish like you used to right that is correct yeah so i would i would think this would be a better team fishing boat in general than the more narrow boats that you might have been in the past that is correct yeah uh you know one thing we did not do we didn't do the tipping test we need to do that before we get out of here Okay. But I'm, I, I feel confident it's going to be better than what we've seen before. Uh, so you've been, you've been happy with the Lynx for a year. You, you're, what so, do you think so, you'll order next year? So I've been in this boat now for six months, close to six months, and I think I'll probably get another one. Okay. I think this and is your boat for a while. I think it's my boat for a while, and, and part of the reason why is not only for the size of it, but it actually performs really, really well on the top end. Hmm. You just proved it to me. And I was, I was very, very uh, excited, happy that it did perform as well as it did. So, just ballpark, and, and we're going to prove it on the water. But this is a low mid seventies tournament loaded boat. This is a low mid seventies tournament loaded boat with two people and live wells full. All right, so there's some odd lines in this boat, and the rod box is down the middle. We'll look at it in a minute. How much adjustment time did that take you? Uh, not much. I mean, a couple of trips maybe. You get kind of in tune with in and out and some of that stuff. Uh, not long at all. So what we're talking about is, and I'm going to be real careful not to hit my head in here. This is the rod box in this boat. Yes. Okay. It's the main rod box. So it's right down the center of the boat. Boy, they got good lights in it, don't they? Yes. <laughs> so your lights are on, so it lights up anytime you open well, it. Well, it will stay on for a period of time. Okay. And it automatically shut off. So you can see lots of rod room, lots of tubes in there. Holy cow. I think uh, 15 rods without laying anything on the floor. On the floor, maybe more than and that. not doubling them up. Without doubling them up, yeah. So what Phil was talking to me about a minute ago was the one thing that he said takes some getting used to is that center step. But he also pointed out the one good thing about that center step is you can go from there to the back deck real easy. And again, for you old guys, not young guys like Phil and I, that's handy, right? Because I do have to make a pretty big jump there. But what he pointed out, now, I, I personally like a dual console boat. So if I were to buy this boat, I would put another console right here. And if you've been in many dual console boats, you know the challenge then is when you want to sit down and change your tackle out, it's really hard to do. And what Phil pointed out was, see if I can do this without hitting my head in here, he can now sit, even if there's a console right there, he can sit and get to his tackle. Sorry, I know that was a camera angle. But he can sit here 
get to his tackle and work on his tackle. He's got his tools right here up out of the way. And that gives you, I mean, that kind of reasons. Whoops, I didn't lock that. So, that. so also, Ken, if, if by opening that box there and you have, you have rods laying over there, it doesn't push them over the side of the boat. It just pushes them up against the gunnel here. That's a great point. Let me show you what he's talking about. So as opposed to my boat, and that's something I hadn't thought about. And again, this is why I like talking to guys who fish a whole bunch. So what he's talking about is on my boat, that's one little box and one big box up there. And the little box is a really small box. The bigger box here is back here. And that doesn't cause all the angle issues. You see where that's that... the reason this one is pushed in too, because you, your reels are laying here. As, as you go down the narrow they get. So you don't need as much space at the end as you do up front. So either one of these boxes you can open up with your rods here and it doesn't push anything over, this, over to the so side. So that right. explains the funky angles he put in here. Yes. I say he, they. They put some funky angles in here but they did it to give you a place for your rods to lay not to get flipped out of the boat. What's that box? Just that's, another... that's what they call a day box. That's a long day. And it's a, it's a, it would be a long day if you was to... Oh, but it's shallow. But it's shallow. Yes. And I saw your net storage. Was it right here? Yes. Okay, there's his net storage. And you see Bass Cat goes with a big lip and gasketing to keep their boxes dry. Now, we've talked about, and, and Phil and I talked about, so... You see carpet in those boxes, no carpet in those boxes, and the back boxes don't have carpet. I hope to see eventually everybody go to no bo no carpet. In you guys know I've become a non-fan of the carpet in boxes. All right, I, I had never noticed this or seen this before, but what he's telling me is that's a little compartment. Yeah, I just twist. And it's something that I guess truck drivers use to carry your credentials. See, I what I do is I carry spare keys in. I shouldn't be saying that, but... So if you ever see this boat on the, on the bank, you can get his spare keys out of there. <laughs> but you're right, because my I keep mine in my glove box and it gets wet. Yeah. So it's a mess. Yeah. And then you got your little day box, little side day box right there yep. to put your wet stuff in. And then down here, I noticed... I actually feel better now knowing about why the odd angles are the odd angles yes. that they are, because I was really confused. Right. And so it looks to me like... Push down. Push push down on the lid. And that's just the trim, the, the bubble trim that's keeping it water. So right. each light has its own control? Yes. Punch that light button for me. Is it power on? No. Okay. So each light has its own control. So you don't have to light the whole boat up if you need light in the morning or in the evening. There's another one right there. Uh, oh shoot, I was pointing the camera everywhere except at the lights I was talking about. Little center step. I'm assuming that's some kind of little box. Yes. And what that really is, is, is really a nice ice cooler. Okay. It's got two. That's not, is that the main cooler or is this the main cooler? They're both about the same. That one there is a little bigger because it goes up underneath uh -huh. a little bit than the one in the middle. Look here, same thing Terry Hawkins did in his boat. Y'all remember that from Terry's boat? He had cut that foam to set his stuff in. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great minds think alike. He sure had. And then we've got another ice chest here. Yes. That's not the ice Hello. chest. No, no, that's just your day box. Yeah. A little rubber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole thing underneath. Yeah. So that's obviously the one you like to use. That's the one I use. Yeah. I may have to reshoot that, guys, and show y'all, but there, there's what we're talking about. So that whole center compartment lifts up, and then there's that little day box in there where you keep your phone and stuff. Where's your bat Where's your phone charger? All it has is, and this one is a USB port right here. I got you. Okay. <clears throat> That's got guys. Change that. Give us one in a box. The only thing I've seen so far, I guess that's your old crap handle for your coin. That's your old crap handle for the boat. It's out of the boat, but it's big and handy, and it's solid. This would be one thing I've seen that I would want to change because any of you who have the big uh, wide balls on the tip of your rods, that's going to be hard to get that in there. It's really spacious. 
and I guess you could hang them on the back deck or lay them down there because that's a C deck is what that basically is. Got a little box there. So do you carry most of your tackle there or here? Here. Now there is a bunch of stuff over there that if I started, and it just, just depends on the season, time of, time of year. I know right now that I'm not going to be throwing a bunch of crankbaits. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that's not a bunch? <laughs> a bunch. <laughs> Things that he does right. So couple things on the front of the boat and it's interesting so in the uh, in the charger we looked at and there was another boat it was either the Skeeter what did I just look at or the Falcon it was the Falcon when you lay that trolling motor down up there there's really not much space left to put your rods down well look what they did they brought it they brought the trolling motor and, and I don't know if Gambler still does it, but I know Clay's Gambler, the trolling motor actually ran down the center line of the boat. But you see they've run that one more inside the boat, so you've got room to pile your rods up there. Now that also gives you really good access to the front for your trim switches or whatever other switches are up here. So we got okay, yeah, so we got trim up and down that are easy to step on, nav lights. And then you have a battery gauge right here mm -hmm. and all that does is give you a battery check and it should be there you go. 37 okay. 38 volts 40 40 what's the little switch down there is that your trolling motor now what that does that switch there you can turn it off and then these don't work so, so you put your cover in on. the smaller boats what happens is people fishing forward in these bass cat boats had a tendency to step on the switches and they would always, you know, mm -hmm. accidentally hit the trim or the tilt, up or down button. And that switch there, you could turn it off. So if, even if you accidentally stepped on it, you had no power back there. Now, the one thing that was weird to me fishing out of the, uh, out of the other boat was how far forward you are in a basket. And I hear a lot of knock on that. And I know you can remove this block and step it back. You don't. You're in the front. I'm in the front, and that's what I've gotten used to. Being in the front, you gives you so much better space to, to roll cast, flip, pitch, whatever. You're you're right there on top on top of the action. What he's really saying is it gives you the chance to make first cast on all the stuff for your partner. <laughs> I feel bad for Phil's partner. I know that's why that scooted all the way up there. Uh, but so you're you're have you ever moved it back? No, and the reason that I would ever move it back is if I started running dual grabs. What that would do would allow you to center move that back and then you could center up another graph right here. But then your troller your three sixty's gonna hit it, isn't it? It, it? or you could take the three sixty and roll it to the other side. Yeah. Oh well, that's right. You've got it set on the mm -hmm. inside. Because this fits better with your cover, doesn't it? Don't know, I'll never put the cover on. <laughs> <laughs> but that is interesting. So that's an odd point. So your point of entry on this boat's got to be over here when you step in the boat, or do you come between? No, I come either on this side or I, I come between. That's funky that you can come in over there, yeah. but I see what you could. That's also, if you guys remember, Scott's Triton. No, excuse me, Scott's Camus. That's that battery tender. That's that quick disconnect. So if you got a trolling motor goes out, you can change the trolling motor out with an Allen screw. And of course, this is the biggest hassle. That's the getting, biggest hassle. Getting, yes. But I mean, just as far as getting power back in the boat, it's literally just a couple minutes. You see, he's put his master buttons for his power poles over there, running a single Solex, a 12 Solex up front. I'm surprised you're running one graph up here. I haven't found the need to run two. So you're comfortable running your 360 without mapping, or do you split it? I've split it. I'm lazy about that. I've gotten and, and that's one you got to get. It's it's the laziness of people that I think forces the. Well, you and I both fish with box flashers. Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah. Box flasher, man. So as I went through this boat, and then subsequently I've looked at a couple of more of these boats. Um, this is probably one of the areas I feel like it needs the most work in, from a fishability standpoint, and. So I would back that pedal back if I were if this were my boat. But then I still don't really have a great place 
to mount uh, dual, dual um, graphs up there. I looked at two of them today in the boat ramp at Caney, and both are doing basically what he's done here, which is put that single one on that tall mount, which I don't like on the right there. Yeah, you could put a Kong mount there. Maybe somebody has a better solution than this, and if you do, please send me a picture. I'd love to see what you're doing, but that it feels like to me should be glassed in and give me a place to set up a dual stack mount. Um, and it just doesn't right there. There's just not a great place to put that mount. So, uh, and, and there's a little bit better, different view of it following this here in just a second where you can see kind of what he's done there. But uh, I also noticed running down the lake because he's lifted it so high, it's hard for me to see past it driving the boat. So that, that just felt like an area that I'd like to see uh, something a little bit different. And I don't know what it is, but something different than what I saw in this boat. Okay. That is for Marco movies. <laughs> All right, so I just, uh, I, I, I think I cut the camera off there, but I'm, I was curious what this is. And it is? For marker buoys. My marker buoys are flouncing around the bottom. Now, we use way less marker buoys than we Today used to. Today, you use way less. I still use them. Yes. It sure does make a good target to cast in. Is that a good solid bracket? Yes. Absolutely. Whose is that? Oh, that's, that's a ball's out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just looks different because I got it turned different. Uh-huh. You got it turned sideways. I use one of those on my side. Yeah. Uh, you see, and I... I may remember this wrong, guys, but I'm thinking I remember. I guess Bass Cat, all of them have that, have the good pull-out slides. And again, so, so Bass Cat offers three different options on rod tie down. You can get a cheap bungee cord or the old uh, rod saver with mm -hmm. the Velcro and then this guy. And I've had all three. That's the way to go. And this, this is a lot easier. The problem, the problem with these is the spring either wears out or corrodes over a period of time, and you got to replace it. Or it'll also eat a jig or any soft plastic right. pull up in there. Yes. Let's do something real quick while we're sitting right here together. This is what surprised me about this boat. I'm gonna pause for a second. I remember right at the back seat hole, my 521C is 67 inches wide. Check this. Right there, about 68 inches wide. And and there's boat outside of that. That's just fishable space. That's a big, that's big. a big fishing that's platform. Big. Especially if you're standing all the way on the front, there's space for your partner to be standing right there behind you if you let your partner get on the front deck, which it doesn't sound like you do. <laughs> measurements on the back deck in here where we ain't in the rain. So do you know the beam on this boat off the top of your head? So it's 96 inches. All the way right there. So, oops, so 76 inches. So it's a little smaller. That's weird on the back deck. That's surprising. But I'm more concerned with the fishable deck on the front. Okay, guys. So a couple interesting notes here. So the boat is uh, a little bit smaller than most of the boats I've looked at at 20 feet, 8 inches. It's a 96 inch beam, which interestingly is the same beam as a couple of the boats that have graded really well, specifically being the Phoenix uh, and the Camus. And it's actually the same width as the Blazer as well. It's, uh, it's probably even a little bit heavy at 1,930 pounds compared to those other boats, because in some cases it's you know half a foot to almost a foot shorter than some of the other boats we've looked at. It, it really, and this is what caught my attention when I saw it in a parking lot. I actually had my tape measure with me before I looked at this boat. I had seen it in a parking lot at a weigh-in. It's got 68 inches of fishable space at that front seat pedestal hole, which is actually wider than what's in my Ranger. Uh, it's not ridiculously big like it is in the L boat, the 520 L boat, but it's way, way, way on the upper end of fishable space in boats here. And then interestingly, the back deck is only 76 inches, which is obviously, you guys are gonna see, this boat's fast. So they figured out how to put a lot of fishable space in the boat, uh, but still make the boat really, really fast. So um, we, we really haven't seen that a lot of speed, and you're gonna see this boat's fast. We've not seen that kind of speed or this kind of speed out of any other boat in this length, and certainly not a boat that weighs this much, a boat that weighs 1,930 pounds. So, I'm, I'm very intrigued with this boat. There's several things I would like to change in the boat, 
but uh, you're going to see I'm really pleased with the performance and the ride and um, and let's uh, let's look at just a couple more things here in the garage and then uh, in part two we'll get the boat out on the water and we'll get the boat graded. Now I'm not even going to talk about live well capacity because you guys grilled me on that on the Bass Cat last time but you see they do super secure and it is a big deep live well. The live wells on the links and a Jaguar are bigger than what's in the others. Oh, they are. Mm -hmm. That's 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 super deep, mm -hmm. super deep, and that's your overflow. So it, I mean, it holds a ton of water. In there. And on the overflow, you could put, I think it's it's threaded. You put an elbow in it and fill it up even more. Boxes on the side again, different angles, right? But it's a big box. I'm leaning on the seat so it wouldn't open. Big box. I like how the lights come on and everything whenever you open them. And again, back here. Uh, now it doesn't have sea foam on the bottom. You put that in yourself. I put it. that in myself. Just to keep it quieter. Yes. But just a finished live well box yes. back there. Now one of the things, and this was so Bass Cat originally kind of set the bar for me on this. Oh, I didn't show y'all this. So they've mm -hmm. also got this little rubber thing here if you want to stick tools down in there. Mm -hmm. But you can see Phil chooses to stick his up there. This is comfortable. I'll tell you. This is. Uh, you know, the last boat I looked at, that Falcon was was pretty cramped up under there, and this one's real roomy, and the driver's side is too. Actually, it's real roomy. Holy cow! So, so one. Okay, you were gonna say something about the dash, and so, I cut you so off. So, one of the things that Bass Cat that I know of always strives to do is is they'll move this console away from you, so that you can stand straight up, getting out, mm -hmm. and not having to slide across to the middle. You've also, I mean, for us old guys, it's a lot easier to stand up because you got you're not sitting with your legs yes, way out in front of you. That's right. Yeah. And they've lifted it so, and I talked about this when I looked at the first basket. That squared off wheel actually does make it easier to see your graph. I'm not sure at this point that I'll flush mount or if I'll lift them again, but there's plenty of room. You can see there's plenty of space there to put your graphs in there. Being a two graph guy, if you're a three or four graph guy or five graph guy like some guys are now. So the, the the steering wheel shaped like it is, it's also, it's easier to make turns or easy handling mm -hmm. the, the boat at wide open throttle too. Because you got something. Mm -hmm. You got an angle to hold to. You got an to. angle to hold to. You see analog gauges, analog gauges, push pads. You know, you guys know I've come to really appreciate older school. I'm not a huge fan of push pads, but that's what you get in most boats. Mercury smart gauge built in. Oh, so we got seat storage. You can't see that over here, but there's storage seats. I just asked him where he carries his spare prop. And he also carries the most essential item in any bass boat. <laughs> in case you got to blow your nose, you got your toilet paper, I mean your nose paper in there. Uh, so one of what I started to show you guys, this was sort of the original thing that I saw on a bass cat. Now we've seen a couple of different versions of something like this now, but I love this idea. If I gotta get to my stuff in there, is there a hinge you gotta pop? Oh, that's what it is. There's a bungee cord under there. Oh, it comes this way. Bang, you got access to all your stuff in there. So, that's slick. Now, the other thing, and, and by the way, I don't think we've seen t to date another manufacturer that spends the money on this, but that's nice. The batteries are snapped in place. They are not going anywhere. That is super. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm showing you other things that what I was talking about. So the batteries are mounted in there. There's none of that crappy strap action. There's all your bilge pumps. You can literally get to everything in here. And he's running poles. He's got space for his uh, pumps over there. And this same space is over here. I just carry jumper cables and a few tools in this bag, uh -huh. which Right. I mean, you don't ever want to need access to your bill. Right. But when you need it, you need, you need it. it. That's right. And you could literally change a build pump out in there in five minutes on the water if you had the tools to do it. Yes. He's running the bobs. You said you're, I, did, I remember you're running a Fury. Fury, I either run a Fury 24 or Fury 25 that's been tuned on. By the way, so I, before we leave, I want y'all to see what he does to his props because it's something that probably would help some of you guys with props 
when you're trying to run faster in a go-fast boat to help you build RPMs at low RPM. So we'll look at that before we leave. But I got to tell you, I mean, just overall, and this is why I wanted to look at another one of these boats. There's some weird looks, right, on that front deck. But it's a big, wide boat. And based upon the first bass cat I looked at, I, that's why I wanted to look at another one. I, I have a sense of how the boats are built. So I'm really looking forward to getting out in the boat and going down the lake. I mean, there's only a couple things I would change in this boat. If I were to build a boat, and I'm certainly not going to build a boat, but we'll get it out and, and uh, push our hair back in it tomorrow, assuming we can get decent weather to do so. All right, so I walked around the front of the boat and saw something I wanted to show you, and then he said, well, check this out. Got a big old light at the front when you're easing around trying to figure out which co-angler is yours at the BFL on Saturday morning. <laughs> you can hit him with a light. What I want to show you guys, again, stuff that's happened to me. Joel, I hope you're watching this. Joel was is my stepson, raised him for a long time. So... To put his boat up, Phil has to open his, his receiver. And my boat, which would have been a Ranger, these cables ran in here. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, Joel was about 14 years old, and he loved to close that up, and he did, and he went to stick that pin in there, and guess what? And cables ran away. So what do you do when you're 14 and something's in the way? <laughs> you push harder. push harder. And he cut all my cables. So... That's just something you might pay attention to, guys. If, you ha if you're gonna be folding the front of your boat open when you store your boat, this would be preferable where, as opposed to those cables running right back through there where that pin can get them, because that absolutely happened to me. But I wanna show y'all what he did to his prop back there.